hey guys, in this video I'm going to be talking to you about protein structure for your A-level biology. So taking you right through from primary structure, through secondary, tertiary and quaternary structure, what different bonding is involved and where the different types of structure is going to come important. Now this is all going to be backed up by a load of revision questions that are just waiting for you all over on my website. Proteins are very large and complicated molecules. They have lots of different levels in them, starting with the primary structure, moving through to the secondary structure, which gets a little bit more complicated. Then the tertiary structure sees things get more complicated, but still within a single chain. And then finally, the quaternary structure. We're going to go through each of these in part. Occasionally, you might see primary, second and tertiary written as numbers with a dot over the top of them. This is just a common shorthand and means primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary. The primary structure of a protein is the amino acid chain. Individual amino acids, the monomers, are joined together in a condensation reaction, linking them via a peptide bond. This will make a polypeptide chain. Any mutations in DNA may lead to changes in the amino acid chain, which may eventually lead to change in the structure, the final overall quaternary structure of the protein and subsequently how the protein functions. Something as simple as a single base pair change in the DNA can stop a protein working altogether or it can cause the protein to act in a way that could be deleterious to the host. The secondary structure starts to get a little bit more complicated. Between the carbon, oxygen and the nitrogen, hydrogen on different parts of the same polypeptide strand, hydrogen bonds can form. You hear about hydrogen bonds a lot on this call, so you should know that individually hydrogen bonds are very weak, but in large numbers, large numbers of hydrogen bonds are very strong and can contribute a significant force. The hydrogen bonding means that a single polypeptide chain can form an alpha helix or a beta pleated sheet. Here, using my lovely molly mods, we can see an alpha helix. A single polypeptide chain that has been curled around each other and you can see the hydrogen bonds holding the oxygens together with the hydrogens, curling it round. These are the R groups. Here we have the carbons in the middle and it is all curled around. In contrast to the alpha helix, this is a beta pleated sheet. You can see the polypeptide chains are going along. The R groups are here and then the hydrogen bonds are connecting the different parts together. After the polypeptide chain has been folded into either an alpha helix or a beta pleated sheet, further folding of the polypeptide chain involving disulfide bridges, ionic bonding and more hydrogen bonding takes place. Disulfide bridges will form between amino acids that have R groups with sulfur in. These are very strong bonds and are not easy to break. Ionic bonds are electrostatic attractions between oppositely charged R groups or any amino or carboxyl groups that aren't already involved in hydrogen bonding. These are weaker than disulfide bridges and are easily broken. The tertiary structure is still made up from only one single polypeptide chain, but now the folding on it is very, very complicated. 
for some proteins, this is where it ends. And their tertiary structure will be their final overall structure. However, some complex proteins will have a quaternary structure involving more than one amino acid chain. A number of tertiary structures will be fitted together to give the final quaternary structure. Now, this doesn't just have to involve polypeptide chains. It can incorporate other components as well, such as inorganic ions. One example of a large globular protein which has a quaternary structure, which you can see here with the alpha and the beta chains. It also incorporates an inorganic ion inside a complex ion. I know that's a very complicated sentence with lots of ions in, but here it is and this is the central ion. You can see on this rendering of the protein, we can see the alpha helices, the beta pleated sheets, and the inorganic ions all fitting together. There are two different types of protein structure you need to know about. The first is globular proteins. These are generally round, generally water soluble, and they are generally used for metabolic processes. A few examples of this would be hemoglobin, as we've just seen, enzymes, and insulin. You also need to know about fibrous proteins. These have a different structure, and that is related to their different function. Their function is going to be related more to the structural side of things, as in cell membranes, cell walls. These are long chain proteins, for example, in collagen. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.